at the end of the day is still your choice. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Sermon in 7, your daily dose of inspiration and the place where we prove beyond the shadow of a doubt that it's possible to receive a mighty word from God in a short period of time. I'm your host, Pastor Tim. Listen, our motivation for why we serve God should never be because we're being forced to do something. And I'm going to expand on that in a little while. But I just need you to understand that all of us should serve God because we want to serve God, not because God is serving us to force him, not because we're being pressured by somebody in the church or within our family to serve him also. Now, there are many examples of this in scripture, but one of the most powerful ones is found in the gospel of John chapter number 10. So go get your Bibles and come with me to that chapter. We're going to look at verses 14 through 18. Let's go there now. And the word of God says this, I am the good shepherd and I know my own and my own know me, even as the father knows me and I know the father and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep which are not of this fold. I must bring them also and they will hear my voice and they'll become one flock with one shepherd. For this reason, the father loves me because I lay down my life so that I may take it again. No one has taken it from me, but I lay it down on my own initiative. I have authority to lay it down and I have authority to take it up again. This commandment I receive from my father. Now in this particular passage of scripture, the primary focus that most people look at when they talk about it is the the part about him saying that he is the good shepherd. And certainly that carries a lot of weight in this particular section of John. But there's something else that I want to look at as well. And it's contained in those last verses. And it talks about the Lord's motivation behind why he was doing the things that he was doing. And it carries some heavy weight for you and I. I want to give you just a couple of quick points and then I'm going to send you on your way today. The first point I want to make is this. Notice the Lord says that no one takes his life from him, but he lays it down willingly. I want to look at that word willingly because it goes to what I was speaking about when I started this video. Christ wanted them to understand that what he was doing, he was doing of his own free will. In other words, the father had not commanded him to lay down his life, but this was a choice that he was making. God has always been about free will from the very beginning. Everything that God has created that we call sentient has always had free will. This is why there were some angels that were able to rebel in heaven. This is why Adam and Eve were able to sin in the garden. This is why you and I have the issues that we have because God has given us free will. So even in the life or the circumstance of the son, the son, like everyone else, has free will. And the father has not demanded that the son lay down his life, but the son made a choice. And this choice was made based upon the love that he has for the father. The son loves the father. And because the son loves the father, he does the will of the father willingly. That's our pattern. We love God. And because we love God, we obey him willingly. We're not forced to obey God. We're not made to obey God. But this is a willing thing that we do. That's point number one. Point number two is this. He said, no one takes my life from me. This also is an important point that we need to consider. Jesus is saying they can't kill me unless I allow them to do it. Mankind, in other words, is not in a position to take anything from me, let alone my life. They cannot take my life. I have to allow them to do what they're going to do. This is an important point, specifically for you and I, because if Christ had to allow them 
to take his life. If the spirit of Christ now lives in you and I, it also means that others can do no more to us than what he allows. They cannot do more than what is allowed by God. And Christ had to let them arrest him. Christ had to let them put that cross on his shoulders. Christ had to let them nail him to it because without his permission, none of that would have occurred. You and I need to understand when we're going through things that whatever comes our way, comes our way with the permission of God. Because if he does not allow it, it doesn't happen to us. And certainly no one can snatch us from God's hand. This is something else that he talked about. Because if we are securely in the hand of God, the only way someone could snatch us out of his hand is if God allowed someone to do that. And because he loves us so much, God is not going to allow someone or something to snatch us out of his hand. Amen goes right there. The final point that the Lord made in this situation is that he had the power not just to lay down his life, but he also had the power to take it up again. In other words, he's not concerned about what he's going to lose when he gives up his life because he knows that he has the power to take his life up again. You and I should find comfort in that as well, that we lose nothing by serving God. We lose nothing when we walk with God because God has the power to make sure at the end of the day that you and I are going to be all right. Christ wasn't concerned because he knew he could lay down his life, but he also knew that he could take it back up again. And you and I need to develop the same mindset that says, you know what? Whatever this world does to me, whatever I go through, however I'm harmed, at the end of the day, I know, I'm confident, I have the assurance that Christ has the power to make sure that I'm going to be all right. That's the most important thing to remember. And when you have that level of assurance, then you live your life with no fear because that's where God wants us to be. The Bible says that he hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but he's given us a spirit of love and of power. That's where we ought to be. Be powerful, be confident, and understand that the God that you serve has all power in his hand. Amen goes right there again. Listen, everybody, I'm all out of time for this particular video. So do me a favor. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, share it with a friend, and leave me a comment. Let me know what you thought about what you've heard here on today. Go ahead and have yourselves a wonderful day. And remember who you are. Remember who you belong to. And never forget that this God that we serve, the one who has given you free will and the ability to make your own choices, <laughs> that God, he can do anything but fail. Join me for another episode of Sermon in 7. God bless you.